the purpose of the fearful situations of nature is meant to be an impetus to love nature. In religion, especially in some of the Western religions where I am coming from, the primary conception of God is a very fearful personality. If you don't obey him, he's going to smash you. And he really has the weapons to smash. Eternal condemnation in hell. Can you imagine that? If you sin, eternal damnation where you suffer for the rest of eternity. That's a pretty fearful type of God, isn't it? And there's instances of sinners getting thunderbolts crashing against their heads and all sorts of, you know, laws. God has ordained these laws, obey or you're damned. That's an aspect of God. In order to somehow or other convince people to love God, there's this element of fear. Yes? Sometimes a parent. A parent doesn't want the child to be afraid. But if the child's doing the wrong things that are seriously going to disturb their life in the future, sometimes the parent inflicts fear in the child. If you do this, I'm going to do this to you. Yes? No, children don't like that. But sometimes it's necessary because it's the only way they listen. So this conception of the fear of God and the conception of the fearful conditions of material nature are to help to sober us up to understand what will really make us happy. It's ultimately meant to bring us to love God and to love nature and to love each other. In the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, we read about Krishna. He's such a loving God. He's a little baby. <laughs> it's not the kind of God that I'm used to in the West. <laughs> Damning people to heaven and hell. He's crawling around stealing butter from gopis. What does that have to do with God? Nobody's afraid of Krishna. In fact, Krishna's afraid of Yashoda. <laughs> this is so beautiful. When Krishna was stealing butter and feeding to monkeys, Yashoda Mai came with her little stick and Krishna ran away in fear. And then she caught him. And she went to tie him up and he was trembling and crying. And Kunti Devi, well, she's remembering how Krishna, who is feared by fear personified, is afraid of Yashoda. And who's Yashoda? She's not a military general. <laughs> She's a, a, a very simple, delicate mother. A gopi. Krishna showing the power of love. The person everybody's afraid of is afraid of displeasing the love of his devotee. So to the degree we actually awaken our love for Krishna and understand the beauty of Krishna, the charm of Krishna, the grace of Krishna, and the love that Krishna has for us, which is beyond this world. It's between the soul and Krishna. And because we've neglected that love and we've rejected that love and we're so mesmerized by the things of this world, the fearful stuff it actually wakes us up to understand what is my real need and what is my real wish, what is my desire. You were listening to Radhanath Swami on devotionalnectar.com. <laughs>